I don't know what you were expecting. But as a sword, I'm pretty one-dimensional in what I want! Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 2, the Enhanced Edition, The Shadows of Arm. And way last we left off, the party had been disguised as a group of drow and tasked by a silver dragon to infiltrate the city of Usnatha and retrieve her eggs. Should she try to do it herself, the drow have promised that they will destroy the eggs, and we definitely don't want that. The silver dragon is our only hope of getting out of the Underdark, and she's even promised us a piece of her hoard should we succeed. But that is far easier said than done. Though we currently look and sound like drow, Terry has no idea how drow society works. So it's a good Not thing that we have Vaconia in our party. This is actually the first time I've ever got to this point in the game with Vaconia, and already her advice has proved very useful in dealing with the gate guard. I'm sure she'll have a lot more to say that will help us deal with the many social interactions that we'll have to have while in Usnatha. We have to make it look like we're drow. We need to blend in. And we don't know too much about drow society. We picked up a few things here and there. We know that most drow worship Loth. We know that their cities are terribly ruthless places where everybody is trying to betray each other and gain more power. We also know that it's a matriarchal society and the most powerful people are the clerics of Loth. Beyond that, we're not too sure. We do have a feeling that they do have lots of slaves, and so let's be very cautious as we explore around and see where we need to go. We've been tasked with meeting someone, so we should probably not leave that person waiting. But it's a good idea to also keep our eyes open for anyone else we can talk to and any clues as to where those eggs are. So without further ado, let's step into Usnatha. We get the whole map immediately, and there are quite a few places of interest. There is an Aboleth tank here. We'll be dealing with that later. There is the Usnatha Bazaar, a tavern, the Female Fighter Society, the Upper Levels, Quilu's Home, the Male Fighter Society, which we need to go to immediately, House Jelat, Dirix's Tower and the Temple of Loth. We are not going to the Temple of Loth anytime soon. That place is heavily guarded. And look at the swirly magic effect that persists even on the map. That's quite cool. Let's step forward and get a very brief primer as to how Drow Society works from an interaction. Very well. That's a valuable merchandise, you fool. Be careful. Please, master, I haven't eaten in a week. No more of your idiocy. You've outlived any usefulness. What's going on here, lethal? The slave never listens and I tire of it. The slave is not your property, he's mine. I'm sorry, mistress. The slave got out of hand and was punished. Understand this, fool. You're easier to replace than a trained slave. But mistress, I... I have other sons. Idiot! Where shall I find a slave now? That will pretty much tell you how ruthless Usnatha is going to be. Now, there are many opportunities in this city for a good party to do tiny acts of good as they're going along, so don't worry if you've got here as a paladin, you certainly have your time to shine. Not literally, that might give away that you're a paladin, but you do have tiny little things here and there if you're observant. Now, there is a Githyanki here, and a Githyanki champion, and this drow here, who happens to be a merchant. So, let us see if we can sell a few things by, of course, giving these items over to Terry, and raising her charisma so that we can get better deals. There are a few things I think that uh, Edwin could do with having. Let's talk. Whatever to walk want. apart from house and queens, to walk into the do you wish to see the magic I have acquired? I have many a magical device fashioned by drow hand, as well as some taken from lesser races that did not deserve them. Yes, I shall see what you have. First, we're going to sell things. This person pretty much has spell scrolls, which isn't bad. We could certainly do with some of them. Now, let's get rid of the turquoise gem. This, this here, this here, this here, all of these. And this, and this, and I'm sure the uh, merchant will be asking where we got these from. We can quite accurately say that we took these as spoils of war from enemies that we defeated. 
as that's quite true. 400 gold here. Let's look in this bag. Not as much in here, but we can get rid of these for 66. Then we can open up this bag and see if we're going to get any significant amount of money for all the drow equipment. And the answer is no, it's not worth a lot, as I suspected. But it is worth uh, checking it. We got 200 here. Actually, I accidentally closed the uh, bag there. Silly me, we want to sell things, not close bags. It's like, I have these things for you. Oh, are you going to sell them? No. Actually, I am. I'm kidding. We want to uh, get rid of this item. Yeah, that's not very useful. That's not useful. That's not useful. That's not useful. That is a lot of money indeed. Not bad. We could also get rid of the impaler. I feel like keeping everything else here. That's fine. What about in this bag here? We can get rid of all of these, and that, and that, and that, and that for sure, we don't want that, and four suits of, uh, Elven Chain. That's still nearly 2,000. Not too bad. Now, there are a few more things that we can sell here, namely stuff in this bag. We have this, these, that, that, this, keep the Star Sapphire and the Emerald, but we can get rid of everything else, and we can also get rid of this gem, and these two. Marvellous. With this, we are going to purchase some scrolls, I believe, at the bottom. There'll be, yep, a few that Edwin has not learned, like Mantle, which will give him invulnerability for only four rounds to all weapons of plus two or lower enchantment. Not bad. Then there is Mass Invisibility, which does exactly what it says. It makes everyone in the area invisible. And then Ruby Ray of Reversal, which is really good at dealing with a very small subset of magical protection spells, like Spell Turning, and Spell Immunity, and Globe of Invulnerability. That is useful, especially when dealing with certain wizards. We'll buy those. And we still have just shy of 80,000. Now let's see if there are any other merchants that we could talk to. To walk apart from house and queen is to walk into the grave. Welcome to my store, sister. You will find my blades true and sharp. None are better. But remember well, I will not replace anything once it has been exposed to the surface world. Adamantine weapons and armor decay once outside of Lot's dark embrace. Is there nothing that can stop such decay? No, and of course we would wish it no other way. It would be a great insult for those of another race to carry drow weapons. I see. Show me what you have in stock. Now you have some mundane weaponry, mundane armor, mundane stuff. Firetooth plus three is not mundane. This is a throwing dagger. This throwing knife is imbued with magical fire, and was supposedly carved from an extracted red dragon tooth. Tavern tales suggest that the beast is still alive, her anger fueling the enchantment within the weapon. Though fanciful, the story is consistent, and it is said the dagger returns to the thrower as though on wings. It's a pretty nice weapon if you're using daggers. We are not. There is also Sentinel plus four. A century ago, astronomers noted an unexpected comet coming to Earth offshore of the Sword Coast. An odd occurrence, it was made stranger by the lightweight fragments of metal found days later by blacksmith Huffam Furium, who cared little about celestial events. He fashioned the bulk of it into this shield, though the forging took months and the aid of several enchanters. From the heavens? Nay, from my hammer. Armor class plus five. Then there is the Staff of the Earth. This is very similar to the other staffs that we've encountered that are based around elements. There's also the Robe of the Evil Archmagi. And this is a pretty good one. His powerful robe offers protection from all forms of physical attack, while at the same time increasing one's magic resistance and saving throws. Due to the nature of its enchantment, it can only be worn by wizards of evil alignment. This would be useful if we didn't have the Robe of Vecna, which we do. Nothing here that we can uh, learn. I'm curious as to what your shield does. It's just armor class plus four. You know what? You could do with a better shield, so we shall get that better shield. It's expensive, 
but it's worth it for that extra point of armor. 14,500? Sold. You can have this, which should increase your armor class even more, to minus 14. That is absolutely ridiculous, and I love it. Now, is there anything else that we can buy? I believe you have a few things that I can purchase? Do not question the matron mothers. Enter and welcome to my store. I offer potions of drow design, as well as work as well as the work of the finest enslaved alchemists. What have you need of, sister? Let's see what stock you keep. There's quite a few nice potions here. Any of them we particularly want? There is the rod of smiting here! This long, thin rod can be wielded as a staff. This rod has been designed to destroy golems. Any golem struck by the rod must make a saving throw or be destroyed. In the hands of any other than a cleric or mage, the rod becomes unusable. That's a very specific item. I may be back to get it. But then there's this. Caligan's Amulet of Magic Resistance. This particular amulet has the initials KP on its back surface. KP, or Caligan Punil, was the gem well of a small force sent into the woodlands to clear out red wizards. Being particularly fearful of magic, he wore this amulet into battle. Overconfident in the protection offered by this amulet, Caligan finally died when he foolishly ambushed three high-level red wizards who lowered his magic resistance before destroying him with their spells. 10% magic resistance is definitely worth 2,000. And right now, I don't think you're wearing a, uh, amulet, so you can have that. Hmm. And I'm not sure if you're a, uh, no, you are not a merchant, so we'll move on. We'll be back to these doors later. I'm sure we'll have things to sell that, uh, they'll happily buy. Now there's a spider here. Perfectly peaceful spider and a drow warrior. Changes no need to worry about them. Within, Let's move forward the further and see that these drow are currently talking to mind flayers. Drow certainly consort with lots of underdark species. Sometimes they're working with them, sometimes they're fighting them. It all depends on which situation will be more advantageous to the drow. And the illithid. Don't forget they're scheming too. There's another slave here, and if we move a little further forward. Gods help me! Get out of my way! I think that was an escaped slave there. And if we wait a tiny bit... Here are the pursuers. Victory for the Spider Queen! Ho there! Have you seen the surface wench? Tis fine sport, but she's quick on her feet. Here's an opportunity to do some good if you want to. You can tell the truth, of course, if you prefer to see the slave die, but Terry would want no such thing. She went that way. Excellent. She'll taste pain soon. And off they go, the way we came from. If you do take them in the right direction by telling the truth, you'll see the slave's corpse roughly here. She doesn't get far. And the person we want to talk to is over here. Solafine. Let's say hi. Ah, you are the newcomers that have been sent my way, I see. As if I do not have enough to accomplish in a day, without suffering for the welfare of the weak. There is no refuge to be had in Usnatha, fools. We pay for our existence here with blood, and you shall do the same. My name is Solafine, and for now you shall do as I say to prove your worth to the matron mothers. Failure is death. And just because you are female, do not think to challenge me. You are a foreigner here, and no better than a slave until the matron mothers think otherwise. <laughs> I suppose I should get your shepherding underway. Have you a name, Vagrant? Or shall I simply refer to you as the female? The name is Veldrin, and I demand the respect I am due. Ha! You shall get none from me, regardless of your achievements in Ched Nassad. But your spirit may serve you well in Usnatha, if you know when to show it. No matter, one of the matron mothers has taken an interest in your arrival, and wishes to avail herself of your skills. She has sent a handmaiden to speak with you at the entrance platform to the city. I shall be there, no doubt, to herd you on your mission like a nursing mother. I will go to seek her out now. If you are intelligent, you will go to the entrance platform quickly, 
the handmaidens are notoriously impatient. I advise caution in this place. We are fortunate not to be taken hostage as foreigners and sold as slaves. If they mean for us to prove our place, we must serve the matrons utterly. Any misstep, no matter how slight, will draw the attention of the Spider Queen's watchers, and no doubt they are already curious about us. We do not need their scrutiny, yes? Remember, absolute obedience to those of greater rank, especially the handmaidens of Loth and the matron mothers. To those of equal or lesser rank, no mercy. Otherwise, take advantage of whatever favor is thrown your way. For one such as us, it is the only way to achieve what you are not born to. No mercy. It is our way. Thanks for the primer there, Viconia. We'll take that to heart as we quickly make our way back to the place we were just at. The handmaiden is waiting right here. And it's very important, if you want to make a good impression, that you do not talk to her directly. Also, I have no idea why you're going that way. But there's a dog over there. We could talk to the dog, but we really need to be quick. The handmaiden, Imre, is right there. And Solofine is also there. And we are going to speak to Solofine. Yeah. After all, the handmaiden is far higher rank than us. It would be very improper to speak to her. I do what I must, when I must. You have come. Good. Your time in Usnatha will be far less unpleasant if you continue to perform as you are commanded in a timely fashion. As I said, a matron mother has designated a task for us. Imre, favorite of Loth, this is the traveler from Ched Nassad who might be of great use. Your story has been verified so far, Veldrin of Ched Nassad, and that is why you have not been sold as a lowly slave or made an amusement in the tavern. But you still have no place here. You are fortunate indeed that many of our finest warriors are busy with... preparations. Elsewhere. Fortunate enough that a matron mother has decided to make use of you. Cling to that sole hope, worms, and do not fail the matron mother, for if you do, the horrors of your punishment shall be far more terrible than had we beset you at the gate. Explain what has occurred, Solophine, and be quick about it, male, for the Spider Queen demands my attention. At once, handmaiden. If I were to speak of the devourers, Veldrin, you would know what of I speak, yes? You mean the Mind Flayers? Yes, I know what they are. Mind... Flayers? Flayers of the Mind? An interesting term for the Psionic Devourers. Perhaps native to Chednasad? No matter. You are correct. If you are of very high intelligence, you can give a more accurate answer that will impress Solophine. A matron mother's eldest daughter ran afoul of Devourers while scouting. Her fool companions fled or were slaughtered, and she was taken captive. They know a prize when they have one, the Devourers. They will bring the daughter to their city, and should they reach it, she shall be lost forever. With the preparations of the armies, we are the only ones who can intercept these Devourers. We must go to their cavern entrance and wait for them. Handmaiden Imre has given me a blessed item of Loth that will pull the Devourers from their astral travel there and it is there we must pounce. The matron mother has no desire to see her eldest daughter become a snack for the devourers, so we must not fail. Do you understand, Veldrin? I am to meet you at the entrance to the Illithid caverns and ambush some Illithids who have a matron mother's daughter captive. Exactly. The Illithid tunnels are in the southeast portion of the main Underdark cave. I will be scouting, and you will find me there when you arrive. We do not expect the Illithids for some time yet, so you have the opportunity to rest and resupply yourself, if that is what you wish to do. You must meet me at the entrance to the Illithid tunnels within the next twelve hours. No more. Do not be late. Indeed, there are many exquisite horrors that may be found for you in the demon web pits should you fail, and if you decide to run, the Driders will eventually track you down. As for you, Solophine, the matron mother expects even better from you. Report to the temple before you leave the city. As... as you wish, handmaiden. And we've been given a task and a strict time limit 
to achieve it in. We could go do a few things, we could pop into the tavern very briefly, and we may do that, but we'll have to be brief, for we only have 12 hours to get to where we need to be. And that goes by a lot faster than you think, especially if you decide to rest. And so, when we come back folks, we'll briefly look around Usnatha, mainly the tavern, and then we will go about doing our first task, rescuing the Matron Mother's daughter from the Illithid. Fortunately, we've had lots of experience dealing with Illithid, so this should be pretty easy. Right? Oh, who am I kidding? Dealing with the Illithid is never easy, is it? No, no it's not. Later. <laughs>